So welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm going over my entire drivetrain setup for this bike build, going over each individual component, why I chose it for my first mountain bike. So let's get into the video. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel, but let's get into my component choice. So first off is gonna be the Dub GX crank set. This is gonna be the crank set that I went with. I did wanna go with a SRAM style drivetrain, even though I'm gonna be mixing and matching that up a little bit. So I'm gonna be going with a SRAM dub crank set. And I did get this secondhand from my buddy Mario. He didn't need this crank set. And I really do like the SRAM dub bottom bracket standard because it does work with pretty much any frame set. I just have to swap the bottom bracket. So if this needs to end up on another build later down the line, can easily do that with just a bottom bracket swap. Now this specific crank set is a 170 millimeter length, which technically for my height, I. Most bikes would be spec with a 175, but I'm not super worried about that. It'll just give me a little bit more bottom bracket clearance as far as for pedal strike over obstacles because I'm definitely not the best bike handler or rider out there. This is currently set up with a 32 direct mount front chain ring. And I do have some other options as far as sizes go. So I may be going a little bit lower than that, maybe putting a 28 on, which I know seems super, super small, but I'll be explaining why and not really worried about that later with the cassette combo that I'm going with. This is obviously gonna be paired with a dub bottom bracket. This is the standard bottom bracket that SRAM offers. This is a press fit cell bottom bracket for the Diablo frame set, which I do need. Again, like I mentioned in the first video, I wish it was threaded, but we'll see how this goes. I haven't had a press fit bottom bracket in a while, but I've always had good luck with SRAM components. As far as the derailleur goes, this was definitely a donation and I wish I could get a new one, but budget restraints right now, I'm gonna run this kind of beat up secondhand donated derailleur, seeing if I can make it work. And I have a secret recipe for hopefully getting this pretty beat up derailleur to work, even if it's slightly bent. And I'll be explaining that in just a moment. And I will be doing a short video, so please make sure to subscribe on how to restore a derailleur to make it look basically like new, not 100%, but to get it to going from this to hopefully a nicer looking, almost OEM refurbished piece so that it just looks a little bit nicer, even though this is the first thing that's gonna get messed up on the trail. So I'm not super worried about it. Again, it was a donation and my buddy who gave it to me said that it's a, maybe a little bit out of whack, so we'll see. But I think I have the remedy for that and that's gonna be my Archer Components D-WinX trail shifter setup. So this is the little box that attaches to the bottom of the rear chain stay. And I ran this for quite a while on my flat bar Poseidon Redwood build. I'll be putting a link for this review in the description below to check it out. Basically, this is a wireless controller for your rear derailleur. Comes with a little two button trigger cell shifter and you can set it up to whatever speeds you want. So it'll work and is basically future proof. So you can put a, I think three speed all the way to a 13 speed setup on it right now. And I liked how the system worked and this is gonna be a great budget option as far as going a wireless upgrade for anybody because these are only about $350 with the shifter and the actuator here. So I'm really excited to run that. The beauty of the system is, and why I wanted to run it is because since, because if you watch the review, you can actually individually tune each gear as far as how it shifts. So if the cage is a little bit bent, and let's say normally when you're shifting, there's one gear that just never works because of the cage being bent potentially, I can individually tune each of these gears with this setup and hopefully tune out that problem or lag that may happen when I do this build fully up. So that's gonna basically make it kind of work no matter what, hopefully, and we'll see how much I can push this thing to make it work with every gear. Now we'll be doing a 12 speed set up on this and that's gonna lead me to the cassette choice that I'm going with. The reason with the gearing choice that I mentioned maybe going down to a 28, I'm not really worried about because I really wanted to run an XD hub drive body style cassette to have a nine tooth cog at the bottom of the cassette. Keep in mind, most standard mountain cassettes are gonna have an 11 tooth and the slightly more upgraded ones may have a 10 tooth, but having the nine is gonna add basically effectively about three teeth in the front bigger than you normally have. What that basically means is a 32 front chain ring with a 10 tooth rear is gonna be basically the same as a 28 tooth front with a nine tooth rear, but I get the benefit of having the lower climbing gear in the 50 tooth cog that I have on this cassette. So this is a 12 speed unit. It goes from a nine to a 50. This is the more budget friendly option I have run. There's a lot of other companies that make a lighter weight version of this, but it's a lot more money. This one I got from AliExpress and I believe it was about $65 when I purchased it at the time. You can get it faster on Amazon for about a hundred. And then the lighter weight version, which is about 200 grams lighter is about a hundred dollars more. So yes, that would shave a good amount of weight off this build and maybe later I'll upgrade and get that unit. But for now I'm running this to see the, what the durability is like, because for the price, this is a great option. And it is about a hundred or so grams lighter than the equivalent SRAM NX 1150 with more range. So that's why I wanted to go with this. And I'll mention it in a video later after some miles to see how long this thing lasts for 65 bucks. So, and then lastly, the last budget slash because of COVID, I couldn't source anything myself. I wanted a gold chain for this bike build because I think it'll look really good. So I went with the VG Sports 12 speed chain. 
I've run some other chains that were aftermarket of PYC, and I wanna see how this is gonna compare. This was about 36 bucks when I purchased it on eBay. And again, I just wanted a gold chain and I needed a new one. So I'm gonna see how long this thing lasts, especially put up against the dirt to see if this chain lasts at least half as long as something double the, double the price. Most higher end GX style chains, uh, SRAM style chains are about 80 bucks a piece. So if this thing lasts half as long, I'd consider that a mild win. If it lasts longer than typically what I get out of that chain, I think that's a benefit. So we'll see as the time progresses. But that's gonna be it for my drivetrain set. Up. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I check them every single day. Again, I wanted to go with kind of a more middle of the road setup on this bike build. GX is a great drivetrain and you can get these secondhand parts like you saw with my derailleur being a little beat up to see if I can make that work. And the crank sets obviously aren't new so I could, you can source those secondhand. The Archer components setup, you probably would have to buy new. That might not come up used that often, but I like the future-proofness of the setup and I wanna check the long-term durability with putting more miles on this hardtail build. So, and lastly, please make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well as you can support the channel via my spreadsheet with my Slow But Look Pro merch, as well as on Patreon really just help out and all those links for those things are in the description below and lastly thanks for watching this episode of locked in let's get locked in